Hi everybody, Patrick here from EngineeringShot.com and ElectronicLessons.com. Uh, this video will be an assembly video for my ultrasonic uh, ultrasonic uh, motion detector module that has three modes, high sensitivity, low sensitivity, and toggle. Uh, it has relay control, and I have another video that offers a full demonstration on it because there is quite a bit to talk about. This video will mainly be putting it together and running a quick test. So here's the kit, let me show you all the parts. Okay, so you got your custom PCB, 5 volt relay, ultrasonic transmitter and receiver module, uh, 100 microfarad electrolytic capacitor, uh, 2 pin terminal block, uh, power diode, a 470 ohm resistor, a 1k ohm resistor, a 10k ohm resistor, and two 1k 2 ohm resistors, 1.2k, two 0 0.2. Zero 0.1 microfarad capacitors, or rather 10 nanofarads, uh, one 0 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitor, uh, momentary push switch, 2 pin header, 2 pin header connector, uh, toggle uh, power button, power switch, 3 millimeter red LED, a 2N2222 NPN transistor, 7805 5 volt regulator, a 3 pin terminal block, uh, a programmed PIC 10F222. Microcontroller, 555 timer, and two 8 pin dip sockets. So, first of all, let's talk about the resistors and the capacitors. Sorry about the lighting, I can't seem to get the lighting right right now. Um, as you can see, here's the board all the resistors, five resistors, four capacitors for the resistors. No polarity, doesn't matter which way you put them in as long as you use the right value in the right places. Again, two 1K2s, 1.2Ks, a 10K, a 1K, and a 470 ohm. Now, one th very important thing to note, R1 is labeled 10K, but it actually should be 1K. Place your one single 1K ohm resistor in the R1 slot. Place your single 10K ohm resistor in the R3 slot. So R1 is labeled R1 10K. You should place your 1K ohm resistor in this slot. R3 is labeled 10, R3 10K. Place your 10K ohm resistor on the R3 slot, which is closest to the outside of the board on the right from this perspective. Your single 470 ohm resistor is placed in the R2 slot, labeled R2 470R. Now your two 1.2K ohm resistors are up here, R5 and R6. So make sure that every all of the right values are in the right places. Solder them flush to the board, make it look nice and neat. Now onto the capacitors. The capacitor, the first capacitor, the electrolytic capacitor, uh, goes in the C3 slot. Now, it's labeled 10U for 10 micro, but it actually should be uh, 100 micro. 10 micro would do fine, but I've added, uh, I've changed that value uh, as an afterthought to 100, or sorry, 100 to 100 micro. Now, what you'll notice is there is a long lead and a short lead. Long lead is positive, short lead is negative. On the footprint, there's a pin on the left and a pin on the right from this perspective. The right pin has a tiny little plus sign just underneath it. That means that the long lead should go on the right and that the short lead should go on the left. Make sure you don't reverse polarity or else when you power it on, that cap will blow up and no one, no one's going to like that. It smells bad and your circuit won't work properly. Your single uh, 0 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitor goes in the C4 slot labeled C4 0.1U. Now there's no polarity on this. Both leads are the same length so you, can, you can't reverse it. It's okay. You can place it in either way. Same with your 0 .0, uh, your 0 0.01 microfarad uh, ceramic capacitors. Your 10 nanofarad ceramic capacitors. They're actually smaller in size. Uh, and they go into the uh, C1 slot and C2. Both labeled 0.1U C1 and 0.1U 0.01U C2. Let me repeat that one more time just for clarity. C1, C2. 0.01U, C1. 0.01U, C2. Again, no polarity. Uh, might be a little bit difficult to see from this perspective, but if, this, if I've caused any confusion here, simply just watch this part again and make sense of it. Uh, it's really easy to do. The only thing you really have to worry about is the electrolytic. Make sure you have the right polarity. So once we're done this step, what we'll do is we will do our uh, diodes, our LED and our power diode, our uh, pin header and our switch, and our terminal blocks. Okay, so three pin terminal block, terminal side, plastic side. Make sure that when you place your terminal block 
in the three pin terminal block slot right here that your pin side is facing outwards and that your plastic side is facing inwards. Same goes with the two pin terminal block side. You want to make sure that the screw terminals are facing outside the board. If you turn it around you solder it in place it's very difficult to get it back out again and you won't be able to wire in your external connections. In this case your power supply, in this case your switching contacts. Uh, your sockets. Both sockets have a notch on the left hand side. The ICs also have a notch on the left hand side. The two footprints on the board have a notch on the left hand side. Make sure that when you solder them in, from a bird's eye view, that the notches on the left hand side fit the no go on the side with the notches on the footprint. It's not as, as important as uh, for the sockets as it is for the uh, the ICs because if you place the ICs in backwards you're going to fry them as soon as you power it on so you have to make sure that ultimately from this perspective that the notches on your ICs your your chips face left from this perspective solder them into place make sure that there are no shorts uh, on the sockets your two pin header goes in right here labeled 555 underscore EN for 555 enable um, if you if you do not have that pin header uh, connecting those two pins uh, in normal operation you have to place an external 40 or sorry 35 to 50 kilohertz signal to drive the uh, to drive the uh, the, tra the ultrasonic transmitter we're not going to talk about that uh, that's touched upon slightly in, in the other video but anyway place your two pin header in there soldered down and place your two pin header connector on top shorting those two pins very important to do that right away your LED goes in the LED one slot. Your LED similar to that of similar to the uh, to the uh, electrolytic capacitor has a long lead and a short lead. In this case your short lead goes in the right side from this perspective on the side where it says LED one on the footprint and your long lead uh, goes your positive lead goes on the left pin. Make sure you don't turn those around or else your LED will not light up when it's supposed to. Short lead on the right, long lead on the left from this perspective. Your power diode. Your power diode, very difficult to see from here, but on one side there's a white stripe, and on the other side it's just black. The D1 slot, labeled D1, 1, and 4004, has a white stripe on the left-hand side. Make sure that from a bird's eye view, the diode goes in with the white stripe facing the left, and the black side facing the right. If you turn that around, as soon as your relay is activated, it'll cause a short, and it will reset your system. So the relay will never even go off if you have that backwards. Be very careful. Solder those all into place, and next we will do our transistor, our switch, we'll place our ICs in, and we'll do our 7805, and lastly after that we'll do our regulator, and then our ultrasonic transmitter. Bah, I'm forgetting things left, right, and center. Okay, get my stuff together. 5.5 five will be labeled NE555, and that goes in the left slot, IC1. Make sure that the notch is facing the left. Uh, IC2 is labeled pick 10, IC2, and again, notch on the left-hand side, notch on the left-hand side, bird's eye view, place it in, be careful not to bend your leads. They should fit in nicely. Your button, your momentary push button, should only fit in the cell footprint one way, line up the, line up the leads to the holes, pop it in, make sure it's flush to the board when you solder it. Your switch, now this is important. You want to make sure that all the leads are straight because it's a tight fit and there's a no little notch on one side and uh, on the other there's no notch. The notch faces the right and there's a little notch on the footprint, it would be hard to see, on the right. And what you have to do is make sure that it's at 90 degrees, you just have to gently line up all of the, whole, all of the, uh, the leads to the holes, might take a second you have to have some patience and just wiggle it in and it fits nicely down onto the board. Make sure it's flush. Very, very fine leads, so use a fine tip soldering iron. Make sure there's no shorts. If there are shorts, it's no real big deal. It really just means that once you apply power, it's going to be on and you won't be able to turn it off. That's not ideal. The only three holes that you really have to worry about are the middle ones, the leads. The outer leads are just uh, fa fasteners. They help fasten, it fasten the switch down. Anyway, relatively easy to do, just be careful when you do it. The uh, 7805 has a front side, black side with writing on it, and it's got a 
ground side. That's just white or grayish, if you will. Now that goes in the 7805 slot right here. There's a white backing to the footprint. From this perspective, the white backing, white backing on the back of the footprint. Place the front side with writing on it facing the terminal block. Place it into the into into the the the, uh, the three holes. Make sure it's down. It's, it's as far as it will go. Don't force it, and solder it into place. Uh, yeah. So that's it for this step. Make sure that everything is carefully soldered. No shorts. Next, we will do our five volt relay. Last step, and then we'll test it. From the front, the ultrasonic uh, transmitter receiver has four signal lines labeled uh, VCC, Trig, Echo, and Ground. If you turn that around and face it outside, those signal lines match the uh, signal lines on the board. VCC, trig, echo, and ground. So place it in at 90 degrees, solder it in, cut the leads, <coughs> and then we'll test it. Okay, so there are, uh, as I mentioned, three modes. By default, if you just power it on, again, there's a, there's a power switch here. Right now it's off, and here's our select button. So by default, what will happen is if I turn it on and don't press anything, we'll enter into high sensitivity mode, which is mode 2, and you'll see the LED blink twice. Now, if I put my hand or an object roughly a meter, maybe just under a meter maximum, in front of the uh, ultrasonic um, transmitter receiver and remove it, LED will turn off, relay will turn off. Relay on, relay off. So I'm holding my hand there, I'm bringing it back. So that's high sensitivity mode. Now low sensitivity mode is mode 3. Now what we have to do here is turn it off, turn it on, wait a second, and press the button. So press the button a second after you apply power, and the LED blinks three times. Now we're in low sensitivity mode. Now I put my hand back there, nothing. I have to bring it in within a foot or closer. So there you go, low sensitivity mode, uh, up to about a foot. So uh, now all that's left is toggle mode. Toggle mode, all you have to do is turn off the power, Press down the but the cell button, apply power, and we're in toggle mode. We've got the same sensitivity as uh, as high sensitivity mode, mode two. Only this time the relay will toggle every time you break it. Now, if you hold your hand there, it'll stay off. Again, hold it. It'll it won't keep toggling while you're while something's blocking it. Pretty neat, huh? Anyway, uh, how it works is there's an onboard 555 timer which pulses to our transmit, uh, our, our transmitter, ultrasonic transmitter, uh, sorry, ultrasonic sensor. The ultras that that pulses out a 40 kilohertz signal, and that's when that when bounced off an object, uh, it's received and amplified in the receiver, and sent to a PIC 10F222. Uh, into the counter pin, and basically it's a it's a matter matter of counting and comparing because the frequency is different based on the distance between. Um, sorry, I'm in the wrong mode for that. Um, based on the distance that the object is from the sensor, hence high sensitivity mode and low sensitivity mode. Now I can have this turning on a lamp, L lamp on, lamp off, lamp on, lamp off, motor on, motor off. I can turn it off, turn it back on enter into uh, high sensitivity mode and someone walks by uh, you want to have a loud uh, 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 siren alarm uh, if someone walks by it scares the pants off them siren on siren off siren on siren off I programmed in a little bit of a delay just so it's not going Click, 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 if you're right on the brink of the distance. And you can also, and I wouldn't suggest using this necessarily unless you're feeling adventurous, is there's also 
three pins here for uh, external ground, or, or basically it's just a ground pad, a VCC rec uh, regulated 5 volt pad, and uh, an external pad for external frequency. You can actually feed an external frequency between 35 and 50 kilohertz to the transmitter. All you have to do is remove this jumper called 555 enable and and just place your uh, place your uh, your external signal there and that will feed the, the transmitter. So you can putter around with that. Anyhow, long enough video. I have to make an assembly video for this. Uh, we'll be selling this in fully assembled form and in kit form. So if you feel up to it, fancy, uh, check us out at uh, engineeringshot.com and electroniclessons.com. I'll have an assembly video up in a couple days. Thanks for watching, everyone.